Another unfortunate instance of criminal neglect happened at CERN, Case 24-68 DECA. Unlike the previous tests entirely, focusing primarily on a separate mutagen, though this one was predicted to have different results, the findings proved the relation between the two, thus making it a DECA experiment. This chemical had an odd property. Rapid oxidation when exposed to air caused a strong enamel exterior to grow. Having more of a physical texture of porcelain, it takes a tremendous effort to fracture it, and the interior is an almost solid gelatin that forms in strands and ropes. It seeks an anchor point and builds itself into support roping. We also found that this substance can seek out and move on its own volition, looking like ferrofluid while moving. Dense black pillars and sharpened points burst from its undulating form as it slowly lurches towards its target. When allowed to interact with its target, the reaction is odd. A slug was left in an empty aquarium with merely 24 milligrams of this substance. Upon hitting the floor, the substance immediately began to move toward the slug. It was noted that while it moved, the formations on its body changed dramatically the closer it got to the slug. Barreling forward, the substance slammed into the slug and began to encompass its form easily. Soon, there was no spot of the slug that wasn't jet black. Quickly afterwards, the slug died and the substance began to oxidize like usual. It only oxidizes when it's given a biological mass to cling to. Unfortunately, this substance also reacts strongly with our previous mutagen, and at the point of case 24, they were respectively named Alpha and Gamma. Alpha being the previous mutagen and Gamma being the ferrofluid. Case 24 started innocently enough. Dr. Housie obtained a sample of the gamma fluid and began experimentation. His tests lasted lengthy periods, and he rarely spoke of it. Seemingly engrossed by the substance, he obsessively tried hundreds of things, all behind closed doors. Only a couple years later it was revealed that Housie had a minimum six live human subjects, all of which were amputees. Supposedly, in his appeal to the board, he claimed this substance takes the shape that the organic material comes from. For example, if a human lost their arm and they were able to make complete symbiotic relation to the gamma fluid, the fluid would tear and rip away whatever is impeding the growth. Moments after injection, if you lost your arm, any excess skin or muscle tissue that grew over the joint would be torn apart from the inside out. A side note made by Housie is that apparently, no amount of regional or general anesthesia was enough to even blunt the pain the subjects experienced. After making an open path, the fluid is quick to clot the blood flow and begin construction, starting from the outside, going in. As the primary support beam for the forearm is made, the fluid begins to bind to the flesh. Subjects describe the pain as a hundred syringes sticking into them and continuing to push through. Your entire body and the side of the amputated arm would be in searing agony. Spasms and jolts course through you as if you were electrocuted. Only one of six subjects, at any time, wouldn't break into a grand mal seizure. This pain is so intense that one subject overdosed on morphine before the symbiosis could complete, causing violent results. If the fluid cannot bind to a living organism, it rejects any organic cells it is in direct contact with, causing an explosion. The subject in question was having their left leg replaced by the fluid. When she overdosed, construction completed like normal, and she had a new leg. This leg had all the joints down to the toes, and it was incredibly sturdy. Halsey, despite having a dead subject on his hands, took the opportunity to test the strength of the artificial limb with physical force. Nothing even cracked the enamel surface. A couple hours later, the body had died and an entire wing of the facility was put into quarantine. After that, Halsey had to appeal once more to the board. They offered a new, smaller facility for his experiments, with a warning. If he were to mess up like this again, or worse, show up without any more than, yes, the enamel is hard, he wouldn't be allowed to continue his research, or any research after that. Complete termination. Thus, we are brought to the real case 24. Halsey had recovered his lost funding, had obtained new specimens, and had all the alpha and gamma fluids he could ever need. In a month, he mowed through 15 subjects, all of which died before any positive results were achieved. 
This continued until September of that year, where he found a particularly resilient subject. Her original name was... Redacted! Codename, Beth. This also became the title of the mission at hand, and the focal point for Case 24. Below is a testimony from the remaining member of Task Force 10, Mr. Redacted! Interview in progress, case log 24-68, sole survivor of Task Force 10, debriefing of Operation Bug Beth now in progress. At 20 hundred hours we were shipped out to CERN, it was fairly dark out, my squad and I were going over our mission while en route. The mission titled Operation Bug Beth was a search, destroy and rescue mission. We were warned of possible threats alongside the destroy target. We were told to enter the building, shoot anything that moves, find Dr. Housie, kill Beth, and get out. Simple enough. You know, we've trained for this kind of shit for years. When our leader told us that the threat isn't anything we've seen, I asked about it. He said, An infestation is what we're dealing with. Alpha mutagen is bad enough. We weren't trained for that. Word is, this isn't just gamma either. Dr. Housie supposedly intermixed the two most powerful mutagens with the most stable of hosts. That is Beth. Previous teams found out that bullets ricochet off of her. So watch your spread. We don't know how she will react to explosives, but we have a few plastics with us. I'm not going to make any promises to you guys. Even our superiors can't fully explain what we're going up against, and they refuse to show us the footage. If you have to choose between fighting that thing or anything else in the facility or escaping with your life, get the fuck out. Copy? When we made it to the facility, there were a ton of guards and lights keeping an eye on the place. The power was shut off, so we entered through the maintenance door at the back. Usual breach and clear routine, nothing out of the ordinary on the first floor. We found out that Dr. Housie had a second, lower floor installed without the board's knowledge or approval. That's how far the last team made it. We snaked our way down the first basement floor. We saw staff members strung up on the wall, impaled by medical equipment and sometimes each other. It was horrific. All the dead men looked as if something had just burst out of them. At the end of that hallway, we saw our first sign of movement and readied. Safety's off. We proceeded carefully and peeked around the corner. More bodies. Just tons of them. Mutilated. Their flesh was puffy and jet black. It looked as though some of these men burst at the seams. Their skin was torn and loosely gripping their swollen and torn muscles. Others had died a while beforehand. Their wounds enameled. Whatever was down there with us clearly wasn't trying to be noticed. We saw black fingers move from the corner of the wall and recede backwards when we shone our light down the other hall. Our leader told us, just find Housie, try and avoid those things. With that, we continued. It took a very long time to find the secret basement. The whole time we heard noises that no human could have made. Breach and clear. Textbook. The moment the door burst off its hinges, all hell broke loose. Like a firecracker, many of those things, creatures, began to rush us. Back to back, we mowed through them, trying our damnedest to fight them off. Some of them looked a lot like the facility workers. Some of them had no heads, while others, I wish, didn't. Screaming, gurgling, and gunfire. That's all I could hear at any time. The noise was so great, it pierced and shot out our microphones, making the video stream back to our officer mute. Somehow, through some stroke of luck, we managed to down all of them. We were in the stairs, crouched together in the center. All of us took a moment to reload. You could hear some of us panting, and even whimpering. We began to enter the second basement, and man, what a sight to see. A huge medical theater was in the center, surrounded by glass and fluorescent lights. Nearly all clean white, splattered with ink black dots. The window to the theater painted a grim picture for us. We looked down and saw Housie crunched over another living subject, with mountains of notes behind him on a nearby table. He was injured and working hurriedly. We heard Bess screech from the entrance to the theater and bash into the fortified wall that Housie made. We investigated the surrounding walls, looking for a point of entrance. There were two floors to this place, both of which had a ton of offices and laboratories, but only one had Beth on it. We saw a vent on the second floor, just an earshot of Beth. At this point, we had to make a call. Either we book it downstairs and try to gun down Beth, or we attempt to sneak around her into the theater so we can bag Housie. Our kit was suited for this, 
but not for the creature. We each had two flashes, two smokes, and one incendiary grenade. I pulled out a flash and said that I was going to chuck it at her. If we do all three at the same time, one of them should at least stun or distract her. My squad nodded and my leader grabbed an incendiary off his belt. When we reached the stairs, we could make out Beth's breathing. It was erratic, disturbing, as if she had all the vigor in the world. I pulled the pin first and threw it. File corrupted. That's all the information I could salvage from the archives. It seems as if someone went out of their way to hide the conclusion of this incident, which around here usually means something very bad. I have a lead that suggests the findings made in Case 24-68 are being transferred to the military wing. If and when I find out more, I will make that information available. Action.